Hello, everyone.、Uh, I'm Koji Matsumiya. I'm a software engineer at Data Chain in Japan. Welcome for joining me in this session. I'm going to talk about Hyperledger Labs UI that enables interoperability between multiple different blockchains.、Uh, the main purpose of this session is to show you what Hyperledger Labs UI is through a demonstration. First of all, I'd have to describe what UI is. <coughs> As I mentioned earlier, UI is a hyperledger lab project to facilitate interoperability between multiple hetero heterogeneous blockchains. As shown in this figure,、uh, UI consists of several modules and tools. Particularly important components are the ABC module and the layer. This will be explained later. And then, UI has a cross framework for more complex to execute distributed transactions. We have already released cross framework、uh, on GitHub, but we have not yet integrated into the UI. So I'll skip the details of cross framework. There are several important aspects of UI. I have picked out three there. First, UI doesn't require additional trust by on chain verification.、Uh, in short, it means that even when using UI, you can only rely on the security model or the blockchain you are connecting to. Next, UI supports arbitrary data transfer. And computation. This means that you can execute arbitrary smart contracts with each other. Third, you provide abstracted communication methods. Developers just need to design applications that do not depend on the counterparty blockchain. Therefore, you allow us to develop chain independent. If you need more details, we publish a document named on named UI Docs and Hyperledger Labs on GitHub. So let's move on to the next. I've in、uh, IBC is an implementation of the Inter Blockchain Communication Protocol called ICS by Interchain Foundation. IBC is a layered protocol, as shown in this figure. In IBC, we implement modules for each of each role and combine them to achieve interoperability. For example, the routing module is required to link the application to the IBC. The client module behaves as a right client to verify block headers on the other side, and the connection module provides a bit. Connection module provides the ability to safely establish a connection between two blockchains, and so on. Besides, I show the dependencies between each modules in this figure, but it this doesn't matter in this session. The next slide is just an example of sending a datagram by UI. UI enables interoperability with the IBC-based right client method. Right clients are core component to trace and verify counterparty states at local. In order to communicate with new chains, we need a new right client for new chains. One more important component is layer. The layer has a role in the physical connection of IBC. The layer detects and transmits packets from one to the other, and the layer has two important properties: permissionless and trustless. The layer works off-chain, and any third party can operate it. In spite of this, the layer remains trustless because of using the right client. Even if layer sends a false information, 
The blockchain to which a packet is sent from the layer can detect the, connect, detect the correctness by the right ground. Now, I'll show you a sequence of sending a packet between two blockchains. I assume to connect Cosmos and Hyperledger Fabric as an example. I want to go into detail of Cosmos. One key point is that Cosmos has a tendermint for its consensus algorithm. Tendermint right client is included in IBC Go repository. Hyperledger Fabric, as many of you know, is a permission distributed ledger. We call this right client to the Fabric client. Fabric client is included in UE Fabric IBC repository. And it provides a layer as a UE layer. Now, let me explain the sequence the Cosmos sends a packet to Hyperledger Fabric. In step one, a sender creates a packet to be sent to Fabric to uh, send to Fabric in Cosmos. Next, until step five, the U layer detects the packet and gets the latest header from Cosmos and submits it before sending a packet to Fabric because Fabric side needs to know the latest states of Cosmos to verify a packet. And then U layer sends a packet to Fabric and Fabric verifies it verifies it by tender mint client. If a packet is verified, Fabric calls a function according to our packet. Uh, this is a part of the sequence for sending packet using UI. Originally, more steps are required, but some are omitted for simplicity. Uh, there are various methods to achieve interoperability. But let me jump to the conclusion due to lack of time. The right client method is more secure, but it has low extensibility and high verification cost. Now, this is the time to show you a demonstration of UI. This demo is a tonkle transfer using ICS20 between Fabric and the Cosmos. The ICS20 is a standard used for the token transfer, but let me skip the details. You can try this demo by accessing the Fabric Cosmos IBC demo repository. The main components are UI layer, UI Fabric IBC, and IBC Go. So I'll describe a demo scenario. It's assumed that token will be sent from a Cosmos to Fabric. At first, the sender initiates to token transfer on Cosmos side. And then the existing token is locked. Next, the UI layer lays a packet to the Fabric side. I skip updating the right ground at this time for simplicity. If a, receiver, if a receiver receives a packet on the fabric side, new token is minted equivalent to a locked one. Finally, a receiver responds to acknowledgement packet and the sender accepts it on the Cosmos side. Here is a directory structure for fabric Cosmos IBC demo. The chain code and code Chain code and contract directory include, include an IBC application that references the transfer module for fa Fabric and Cosmos. The networks includes environments for both chains. The layer directory refers to your layer. The test directory has a script and utility for the scenario. Sorry, next, let me skip this slide, and uh, I'm also skipping this slide. So far, uh, <coughs> uh, I've explained an overview of the demonstration. Now, let's begin. 
in the first step, we have to build the project by running make build. The make file in the root, and this refers to subdirectories. These build IBC applications for Cosmos and Fabric, and the make file in the layer builds a CLI for the layer. And so, all the artifacts shown in the lower right. Next, we have to launch networks and initialize by make setup. So, the setup script kicks in three more scripts. The start fabric, start cosmos, and the prepare. The start fabric and start cosmos run each network as a Docker container. And the prepare initializes the mo both networks, create both light grants with initial states, and initiate opening handshake as described by IBC. Each blockchain checks if initial states are correct. After we run setup script, the following script, following results are obtained. Uh, <coughs> we establish channels and connections and we'll see that containers are running. So, this is final step. We'll run a demo, us demo using the make transfer. The make transfer kicks a text test TX script which has a demo scenario. Like I said, in, thi in this scenario, we transfer the token transfer from Cosmos to Fabric. This script will print current state and then run the layer TX transfer command with arguments IBC01, IBC0, IBC1, amount of token, and recipient address. After execution, the token is locked on the Cosmos side. Next, this script executes the layer TX relay command to transmit the packet from Cosmos to Fabric and we get the token on the fabric side. Then the script executes the layer tx axe command to reply to Cosmos. As a result, we'll see that demonstration was successful. So finally, I'll quickly show you only current work. Now we're developing the LCP we stand for Light Client, light client Proxy. LCP solves the issues of the Light Client method, such as low extensibility and high verification cost. LCP using the TEE. TEE is a trusted execution environment. Uh, T secure area of main processor, such as Intel SDX, and ARM Trust Zone. More information is available on GitHub and our Medium post. So that's all my presentation. Thank you for listening.